Hey guys, I want to help you guys pass anatomy and physiology and make it as easy as possible on you to do that, okay? So, anatomy and physiology is pretty much a bedrock of everything you're probably going to do in the medical field. Anyone who's going to be anything is probably going to have to take anatomy and physiology to grow as a nurse, a doctor, or whatever. And the thing is, this information continues to surface, so you want to retain a lot of it. So whether you're doing six weeks, uh, anatomy and physiology paired with the lecture and lab, or you're doing it in uh, the 16 weeks, you want to be able to do well in these classes. Uh, most students, of course, aim for A's, so that's the information I'm going to share. And it's not just going to help you now, it's going to help you later on because these are just fundamentals. And some best practices, fundamentals, some rule of thumbs that you could use all throughout your career, but it's definitely going to help you in a &P if you're just starting out here. Now, <clears throat> uh, TLC is going to be the acronym I'm going to use. T stands for tutors. Uh, it's very, very easy to uh, kind of find a tutor on a campus. Uh, they have tutoring labs and so forth, but the thing is some tutors suck, some don't. You need to figure that out. Um, if your lab doesn't have the right models that you're going to be tested on, because for instance, there are going to be like two or three different heart models that they're going to have in the anatomy lab, but you might just be tested on one of them. So learn the model you're going to be tested on. And how are you going to learn that? It's a good question. You're going to ask the tutors. You're going to pick their brains because they took anatomy and physiology before. So pick their brains, figure out what most students don't do well. How can you do that? How, what information should you gather? What models should you invest more time in? Um, and the thing is, as you ask these questions to the tutor, you're going to learn a ton of stuff from uh, different tutors. Get different ones all the time. Uh, learn from them. Gather some information and go from there. Now, the thing is, if the lab that's closest to you doesn't have the right material, you want to drive another 15-20 minutes to the next campus to the lab that should have the right material and go from there. Okay, You want to practice how you play and that's just the way it works. Um, next here is if the tutors aren't very good or even if they are good, you want to communicate with the lab coordinators. The lab coordinators are typically found in the anatomy physiology labs. And the thing about these lab coordinators is typically they're the people that set up the practical exams that you're going to be tested on, the do or die exams that a lot of people get scared about. Okay, So the lab coordinators, um, some aren't very social, some are, it doesn't really matter. Uh, a lot of them like to talk about what they do and why it's important, so you want to talk to them. You want to pick their brains, you want to learn from them. Um, you could even ask them what models or do you know any mnemonics? This is a great question to ask the tutors as well. Uh, mnemonics or what have you that you they could impart to you. What model should you spend more time on? And what's funny enough is a lot of these tutors are going to take ownership of your learning and send you some material, send you some websites, send you some stuff that you would never even know about. And even the lab coordinators would do the same stuff that even the tutors don't know about the lab coordinators know. So you want to pick their brain as much and as often as possible, okay? And they're going to like you for it too because you're making their day go by very smoothly and taking an interest in it. So that's good. The next thing here is after the T, I'll say L for lectures. Um, your lecture is a very important part. The exams could be kind of confusing. Uh, a lot of times it's words that you may not be very familiar with, but get used to it. That's pretty much most of the medical field. It's a bunch of words that you probably never heard before, and that's fine. Uh, it's just a word, a sound that means something, okay? And the thing about some of these uh, students I've been hearing from is uh, their A&P teachers aren't very good. I mean, so what are you going to do about that? I mean, they're rated one star, rate my professor, and they still have a job, and you're a student paying for it. So what are you going to do? You're going to pass the class, right? So the way you pass those classes is, um, well, think of your professor kind of like a poker face. You need to figure it out. I mean, anything that they emphasize, any slide that they spend a little more time on, you want to be able to learn from the way that they teach. You need to ask the right questions. They often say, uh, you're going to hear it very often in this field, there's no such thing as a dumb question. But there are such things as better questions. So you want to go ahead and ask the better questions. Hey, on these subjects, I, what area do you find most of your students have problems understanding? Um, how can I better understand this in a short period of time because I have a tight schedule? Um, and, you know, I read the chapter. I don't quite understand this subject. And I think it's really important uh, because the review questions in the back of the book are asking these questions. How do I understand this? Um, and so forth. And even ask, are there any mnemonics that help me understand this or memorize this quickly because I'd love to retain this information for the rest of my career and so forth. So those are the type of questions you want to ask your professor. Uh, you want to email them too and they'll get back to you with some information. You'd be, you know, quite, uh, 
quite surprised sometimes about how much information they're willing to give you. In fact, if you even ask for a review, they may finish a class earlier and provide a review on information for the next exam or highlight a few slides that are most important and you're going to find some of the information from those slides on your exam. So lastly here, um, on the mnemonic that I was giving you guys a C for communicate. Um, you want to communicate to people who've been in your shoes before, which is pretty much everyone who's kind of progressed into the medical field and still a student. So the best ones though are going to be in anatomy and physiology too. In fact, you're going to have in-depth specific information to even the professors that you're being, uh, that are teaching you now. So it's going to be the most relevant information for you to gather and what's really cool about uh, people in the medical field is they're really uh, open uh, to share because they know how it is sometimes when you know you're busy and you have to learn all this stuff. So they're going to open up their schedules, try and share some best practices with you and make your life a little easier. So you, you want to network with them as well and gather some information. Another thing, that, so I don't forget, is um, you could even take part like uh, the sphenoid bone. Take all the parts of the sphenoid bone, list them on an audio file, listen to this audio file when you're in the gym or your car, and then go to anatomy lab and use them. You also want to use like YouTube channels like mine, where I go over a bunch of the models that you will most likely be tested on. These are the models that I vetted with lab coordinators from several different spots. So those are the models on the channel for you to look at. So you have a ton of resources and it only gets really harder from here you know it's pretty much uphill from here you know you're gonna come to a point where you're studying the endocrine system like four times and every time you're gonna be like well I think I understand this now but there's so much more to it it interacts with so many different things and so forth so for the medical field there isn't like a lack of information for you to learn uh, the key thing is what information is relevant for you to learn right now so everything I mentioned, the TLC acronym I just used over there, the tutors, the lab coordinators, the lecturers, your professors, and communicating with classmen that have been there before, it's a fundamental you use throughout your entire uh, career as a student and even a professional. You need to gather information, relevant information, and that's what I hope this video will help you do. So if you have questions, please uh, comment. I'll get back to you, okay? Good luck.